Coach Offridge Tig uh, here on the top of the New York Athletic Club overlooking the beautiful uh, New York City. Now, Coach, a bit of a contrast with what we see behind you. Uh, you guys, Columbia, was in China this summer. Uh, tell us a little bit about why you guys were there and, and what the format of the event was. Sure, it was a great experience for our student athletes. We were able to bring uh, three men and three women uh, to a place called Wuxi, which is about an hour and a half outside of Shanghai, and uh, was the absolute USA China elite tournament. Uh, ourselves, along with a few other universities, uh, were invited to go against uh, Chinese universities. And it was a five day event, and our athletes got to train, uh, sightsee, and really uh, hang out with other American universities as well as. Uh, these Chinese universities and what was really cool about it was uh, the connections that uh, the, all the fencers from whether from China or from the USA you know, got to experience together so a lot of fun and uh, among the, the American universities represented it was what like Princeton Harvard uh, Princeton was there Harvard was there and Brown and Columbia so this time I believe since it was this, the first one they invited four I uh, heard some rumors they're looking to expand that for some time next year to do their second annual. Now, yeah. of the schools you listed, all schools are in the Ivy League. Is that, was that a deliberate thing or just coincidental? So, you know, I, I didn't organize the event, uh, but I believe there was some deliberate purpose to that, being some of the top universities in the country. Uh, one of their themes was how academics and athletics play together. Uh, we also did this in uh, Korea for the past five years now, where these foreign countries are really using sport to showcase how both athletics and academics uh, is the best for the student. Best combination. Mm -hmm. Now, how long, how long were, were the teams there and how, how many competitions were there throughout that time? So uh, the event itself, like I said, was a five-day uh, experience, which was three days of fencing, one day when they first arrived to kind of get adjusted in the last day uh, a full day tour. So there was an individual competition, which uh, the American teams did pretty well, and uh, team competition, which American teams did not do very well. <laughs> um, I think uh, we'll blame it on jet lag or maybe that we're having too much fun, but, um, but so two different competitions and then ending with a great uh, tour of <clears throat> like a, a large Buddha we saw and we hiked around and really got a great Chinese experience. How much, how much do you think the outcome on the individual side and the team side was influenced by the cultural component with, of course, the United States being more individualistic, China being more collective? Well, so the, the, the funny thing was the competition itself, the way they ran it was they combined foil, epee, and saber, and it was a big relay using uh, all three weapons and also mixed genders. And I think, you know, this was one of the first times that Team USA had a chance to really experience this. And they were having so much fun and just laughing about it that I think we even forgot it was a competition. So we didn't lose by, lose by that much, but I'm not gonna blame it on the cultural side. I just think we're just having too much fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, how much, like, as far as, what, what exactly does Columbia or any of the participating schools for that matter, really get out of this from either a competition standpoint, a uh, fencing standpoint, or, or just you know, purely educational? So I think we got uh, a little bit of everything out of it. From a competition standpoint, we were fencing some very strong Chinese fencers that were in the universities. And then on an educational and cultural standpoint, just being in China, I know for myself, it was my first time in China. And uh, from our six student athletes, actually only one has been to China before. I think that was pretty similar amongst all the other uh, U.S. universities. So one was just a new experience for us. Uh, more than half of the students, including myself, we actually stayed uh, and went to Shanghai. My wife and I, we actually went to, to Beijing afterwards since we were already over there. So a lot of the student athletes stayed to experience it a little bit more. And then, you know, finally, like I said before, interacting with the other student athletes, you know, that. They really made friends. You know, our fencers with the fencers of China, they, they really made a lot of friends. And you know, that was the big beauty of the whole experience. And comparing and contrasting again, the, you know, the kind of the cityscape you have behind you, you've been in New York for, I mean, for most of your life. Mm -hmm. The concrete jungle it is. How did it compare 
with being in Shanghai and Beijing and, and kind of the development that they're experiencing? Well, in China, uh, in Shanghai, the books that we were reading on the plane over was talking how there was about 20 to 25 million people in Shanghai. When we got there, we found out there were 70 million people in Shanghai. When you look at New York, of was that a, a sign? You know, like actually, attention, print error. Uh, it's no, seventy. <laughs> no sign. Just everyone was saying the books don't know, and yeah. there's seventy million people, and we felt it. It was crowded. Yeah. And uh, you, you look behind us, and New York looks very organized compared to Shanghai, which looks like New York times fifty. You know, just New York, New York, New York, New York, New York. Beijing, a lot smaller, only twenty million, which is kind of funny. <laughs> Um, Kiwi. And um, you know, everybody was talking about how Beijing, how the sky would be really black. Uh, we heard that we were there during a good time, actually. It was a week before their World War II parade. And so it was a parade day blue. And it was beautiful. You know, it really was beautiful, but just great experience at both places. Nice. And, and as you described the, that sky, we, we take a look here behind you again to let, let the viewers see exactly what the view is on top oh, yeah. of uh, the New York Athletic Club. Just off uh, 59th Street and uh, just south of the, the park. Yeah, beautiful. Absolutely it's beautiful. one of the best views in the city, I feel. <laughs> Better than Empire State Building. <laughs> there you have it from uh, Coach Offridge Stig himself. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Coach. Thank you.